We work with the uh, Mayan Indians in Guatemala. The uh, basic concept is to break the cycle of poverty. What a great country, beautiful country, beautiful people uh, that are that are poor, basically one of the poorest countries in America, but some of the most humble people and some of the most grateful people for a project that changes the lives of the people we serve there. My involvement with the Guatemala Stove Project began about uh, three years ago. One of our members, uh, Dan Strobel, has approached the club several times with his work that he had done, he and his family in Guatemala with service. For the first few years, you know, we did different projects. We built a school and we built some homes. Uh, we built a few stoves and uh, we were jumping from one thing to the next and it just seemed like we weren't making the progress we would like to make. He was looking for members to actually travel to Guatemala with him. When he was the president, which was the year before I was, he, he made this a project for the club. Going into some of those homes, you look and you see all the creosote up in the roof because they don't have chimneys, have open fires. Kids have fallen in the fire because as they cook and the women spend most of their time uh, cooking, but they die at a very young age because of smoke inhalation and other causes of ill health because of that smoke inhalation and having to work so hard. You know, the stove uh, project is just so important. The stoves free up so much time for the children and, the, and their wives. They're not out gathering sticks. You see these women in Guatemala walking down the streets with bundles of sticks on their head that you wouldn't dare try to carry yourself. So when a child grows up, as soon as they can carry a stick or carry some water, they go off with mom and they spend a good part of the day gathering water and then a good part of the day going out and gathering sticks. And so if you spend four or five, six hours a day on these projects, you don't really have time for school. And so we needed to fix all of these uh, items before we could break this cycle of poverty. These stoves cut the amount of fuel that needs to be burned by a factor of four or five uh, times. And so they have less time to have to go out and gather wood and more time to be doing other things to help improve their standard of living. It also allows us to vent the smoke out of the huts which uh, improves the, the quality of life for all of the family members. I've been uh, really impressed by the fact that we've partnered with other groups who've gone in and helped with clean water, with schools. Bear Horse Partners for Development has a group who is there 365 days a year. We can rely on them to make arrangements, to have products delivered. They work with all of our uh, foundations. I think it would be very difficult for one group to try to accomplish what we've been able to accomplish all on their own and not being in the country, but only visiting the country once or twice a year. My first experience going to a village and seeing those conditions, meeting the people, and uh, seeing their beautiful children and the beautiful people uh, it, was, it, was, it was quite an eye-opener. You could see uh, they had nothing. Their homes were close to nothing, you know, um, mud and sticks. And, and if they're lucky, they had a concrete floor, but 95% of them had dirt floors. We threw in a few little twists. We brought a whole suitcase or two of shoes. Uh, these kids loved, they were used shoes primarily, but uh, all the kids in the village were just ecstatic, you know, just terribly excited to have these shoes. We were able to buy a 70 kilo bag of black beans and uh, take it up and divide it amongst the villagers. And they were so grateful for what turned out to be probably a pound, maybe two pounds of beans. And we were told that that two pounds of beans could feed a family for two weeks. I think of these mothers that can't, uh, you know, console their child with a, with a toothache and they have nowhere to take them, they don't have the money to go far away into a village or to the dentist. And so while my, my colleagues are making stoves, I experienced that first year. I pulled out my dental things and immediately, immediately I had a, a table in the school. There was just a line from here to way out there. When, when the people in that community found out we had dentistry, I mean, 
they lined up. Uh, Phil, Phil, um, I think he told me in the three days we were out in these communities, he pulled something like 700 teeth. It was all that I could do to just continually uh, look at patients and they were just mostly children and then the adults would start to come. But the horrendous, uh, uh, you know, tooth decay and abscess teeth, I really, really enjoy the opportunity to serve uh, with my dental uh, specialty and, uh, and help uh, not just children, but a lot of children and, and their parents. And that, that was very rewarding to me. I can remember one lady saying, I know you're from the United States. I don't even know where that is. I just know it's not here. And to think that someone from a land far away is thinking about my family and myself and wants to help us uh, is more than my heart can bear. And she was in tears and was just so appreciative uh, that someone who she didn't know in a country she didn't even know where it was would uh, spend the time and effort to help her and her family. If we put one of these stoves in your house, you would be so mad at me, you, <laughs> you wouldn't speak to me forever. But these people, we put these stoves in their place and it's marvelous. The people of the villages were so overwhelmed with our willingness to uh, not only come and visit them, but to uh, have raised funds so that we could outfit, in many cases, an entire village with these cooking stoves uh, that uh, usually at the end of our visit they would assemble in the central area of the village, the, the square if you will, and they had a fairly large quilt or, or a banner that they had created by hand that was delivered to our club. And I think every club member realizes that's, uh, that's one of the most valuable pieces uh, of uh, memento that we have. Well, when we leave a village, uh, the stoves that are left there uh, that we've helped with are, are just the, the native cinder block and, and the cooking top. Uh, when we went back to these villages that had had them in place then for a year, most of the families had been able to put a stucco uh, coat on top of the cinder block and uh, some of them had painted them in, in vibrant colors. Uh, almost uh, with the, the ceramic glaze uh, across the stucco and it was a very beautiful addition to their homes. I think what you see mostly in these villages is a spirit of hope uh, where there wasn't before. People are thinking they do have a future. We don't understand what it's to live without hope because you have no education, no chance of education. Uh, but now you go into these villages and even a year later, it's a tremendous difference. Well, the first year I you know, brought back a number of pictures, showed my dental staff, and Cindy happens to be the mother of one of my dental assistants. I decided to take one of my assistants. She said, and by the way, my mother is really interested. She would love to come. And so Cindy, we trained her to be a scrub nurse, basically to clean instruments while my assistant and I uh, treated people. But when you really become Rotarian, is when you're involved doing something for someone else with uh, the brothers or sisters in your own club. So by the time we came home, Cindy really wanted to come out to our club meeting and, and uh, be a part of what we were doing. And sure enough, she came and um, she became a member and she's been just a great member. It's just a, a great opportunity. It's one of the things about uh, being a Rotarian uh, that gives meaning, as I said, to the motto, uh, service above self in a, in a very real and, uh, and lasting way. It's, it's hard, to, hard, to, hard to realize what $150 can do for, for a family down there. It's crazy. A $150 stove just makes a world of difference in terms of time, in terms of health, in terms of uh, cooking ability, in terms of family life. It's, I think it makes a world of difference. We have so much. Why can't we give a little bit to these, these people that are so much in need that are so grateful for it and see how appreciative they are and how it changes their lives and the feeling, once you get hooked, you, you don't want to let it go. I, I would hope that all, all Rotarians 
in our club especially, but I would invite uh, the others in our district to come and see what it's like, and, uh, and it'll be uh, money well spent and uh, a rewarding lifetime experience.